Hello, hello, and welcome wherever you are in the world to the Wednesday live stream on Thursday. The live stream that will help you with your English that is usually at eight o'clock, and today it's at half past five. European time. I know it's been a crazy month, and Lynn apologizes. She hasn't been able to join me this month, but she will be back soon, probably after the summer、um, in September. But this is the last live stream that I'll be doing before I break for August and focus on other projects. So I thought before、um, you go away and have your break. If you're in the northern hemisphere and you are having a summer break, how are you going to keep in touch with your English? So I thought, well, why not use AI? So that's what I'm going to be talking about today: things you can do using artificial intelligence to help you with your English. I've got three recommendations, and we'll be looking at those a bit later. If this is your first time watching, hello. Especially if you're watching the replay, my name's Craig. I'm from MansionEnglés.com, which is a website aimed at Spanish speakers. But anyone can use it, and it will help you with your English. There are free courses, lots of material, listenings, vocabulary, everything you need, pretty much to improve your English. And also, we have a podcast that goes out every Sunday, every week. It's at englishpodcast.com. That's the website, and you can also listen to it on your podcast app of choice, and also YouTube and Spotify if you use those. So、um, I think people are starting to come on live. Milena's here. Hello, Milena. If you are watching, please say hi and let us know where you're from in the chat. Have a wave. Tell us your name, where you're from. And I'll be starting in a couple of minutes with showing you a couple of websites that I've recently come across. Do you know that phrasal verb to come across, to find, to discover? And actually, those two, the latest two that I've been using, were recommended by a student of mine on my conversation course, Abid. So thank you, Abid, if you're watching. Uh, he told me about them because he's a teacher and he uses them with his students, and they are very, very interesting indeed. Hello, Lilia from Argentina. Thank you for being here, and Paloma. Good to see you back again, watching on Facebook. So let's get to it now. There is one AI tool that you've probably heard of, or maybe even used. And it's called Chat GPT. Now, I did do a video about this on YouTube, and you may have seen it before. You may be aware of it. This is what it looks like, and I'm going to post the website address in the chat. It's at chat dot open i open ai dot com. So, if you're watching live, or if you're watching the replay, it will appear for you in the in the chat. Now, to use this AI, which is text based, so you use text to input your、um, questions and commands and whatever.、Um, it's free. I'm using the free version, and the free version uses data from before. I think it's September 2021. You can pay to use ChatGPT, and it's called ChatGPT Four, and I think it's about twenty dollars per month, and it has different data sources, so you're getting data from、um, more areas, I believe, and it's also up to date, so it's not pre two thousand and one, two thousand and twenty one, it's、um, up to this year. But、um, I'm paying for so many things every month that I thought, no, I'm not going to pay for it yet. I'm going to use the free version. So let me give you some idea of what it can do if you've never seen this before. So I'm just going to 
put in how are you today and straight away and very very quickly it will remind me that it is in fact an ai language model it says as an ai language model i don't have feelings or emotions hmm. but i'm here and ready to assist you with any questions or tasks you have how can i help you today now if you can think of a question that you would like me to ask uh, chat gpt write it in the chat here wherever you're watching and i will ask it live so anything you have that you can think of any questions connected to english anything you want to know let's use chat gpt as our teacher and see if i agree with what it's telling us so while you're thinking of a question and writing your questions in let's ask it something quite basic what are the most 50 commonly used words in spoken English? Now, you have to be quiet. You have to think carefully how you word the question. I've written, what are the 50 most commonly used words in spoken English? Because if you're learning conversational English, if your focus is on speaking and not writing not written english then you want to specify that and make sure that the ai draws information or takes information from particular data sets so let's ask it and see what it says the most 50 commonly used words in spoken english and as i thought it's given us a list of very short and very common grammar words if you look at this list of words that it's given us, they are articles, they are pronouns, they are auxiliary verbs, personal pronouns, prepositions. So, yeah, I mean, no surprises there. I can see a modal verb, question words. They're yeah, quite boring, really, and quite predictable. So, Let's go to the next step. Let's ask it about nouns, which are um, words at least with a meaning, with a message. What are the 50 most commonly used nouns in English? And there we've got something a bit more useful. We've got words that you probably would find in a beginner's level course book. Um, friend, father, mother, food, work, home, day, time, year, people, etc. So no, no surprises there. And of course, you can ask it for verbs. You can ask it for the most common phrasal verbs. You can ask it for um, adjectives, adverbs, anything you like. If you... Hello, Pili. Thanks for joining. And hello, Milena from Colombia. Good to see you here as well. And um, and Hoang as well. Hello to you. If you're watching live, we're looking at, and you've just joined us, we're looking at AI tools that you can use to help you with your English. And I'm just giving some prompts, asking some questions to chat GPT, which you may have heard of. It's It's become quite common. Lots of people are talking about it. And I just wanted to show this to you if you've never seen it before. And how can this help you with your English, especially if you're studying English during the summer by yourself and you want to try out some different tools. Now, say, for example, you are reading or you're doing some exercises or you're studying English or you're watching a TV series and you hear a word or two words that sound very similar. And you think to yourself, hmm. What's the difference between these two words? One confusion, uh, two words that are often confused for Spanish speakers, fun and funny are often confused. What's the difference between fun and funny? And when do we use those words? In what contexts? So let's ask chat GPT, see what it says. I've just put in here, um, what's the difference between fun and funny? And you can probably see on your screen 
Fun and funny are related words, but they have distinct meanings and are used in different contexts. Well, that's useful. Fun. Fun is a noun or an adjective used to describe an enjoyable or entertaining experience or activity. So we could use it as a noun. We can use it as an adjective. We had a lot of fun at the party. So it's an uncountable uh, noun. And as an adjective, playing board games is fun. Funny, on the other hand, is used to describe something that causes amusement or laughter. It's associated with humor. The comedian told a funny joke, for example, or the movie was really funny. It made us laugh. So if you are going ha, 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 use the adjective funny. Um, and fun is when you have a good time at a party, at the park, at the beach, for example. We had fun. So that's an example of how you can clarify a couple of words if they're confusing you. Um, if you have a question, a doubt in English, and you want to ask me to clarify something, write your question in the chat. I'm going to ask ChatGPT and see if I agree with what it's telling us. To have fun, it is funny. Yes, Ignatio, very good example. So let's put that up there um, and give Ignatio credit for practicing and being proactive and using those words. Because now that Ignatio has written a sentence or two sentences, there's more chance the difference between those words will stick in his mind. And I think because you're a Spanish speaker, Ignacio, one of them's going to be divertido and one of them's going to be gracioso. Yeah, it's often confused. Let's try a couple more words. What's the difference between listen and hear? Listen and hear. Notice how quick it's giving us these answers absolutely amazing so take off ignatio's sentences um here here is a basic physical ability to detect sound through the ears without necessarily paying deliberate attention to it that's the main difference i'm pleased that it knows that the main difference is attention paying attention if you hear something you're not necessarily focusing on the sound it continues it's a passive action meaning it happens automatically when sound waves reach your ears for example i heard a loud noise outside or i heard the neighbors complaining um however on the other hand listen is active now you are listening to me and remember that preposition listen to something or someone It's an active and intentional action of paying attention to sounds or someone's speaking. Listen to music. It involves focusing your attention on what you're hearing and trying to understand or comprehend it. For example, please listen carefully to the instructions. So it summarizes those differences for us and it says in summary, here is the simple act of perceiving sound without actively paying attention. While listen involves purposely directing your attention to what's being said or heard, to understand, interpret, or respond to the sound or speech. Now, one thing you can, one thing you can do, I'm not going to do it here, but if you receive or get an explanation that's a bit too complicated, you don't understand it, two things you can do. You can translate it into your language. Say, please translate this into Spanish, Portuguese, French, whatever. Or you can say, please simplify your explanation. Or please give me an easier explanation. Imagine I'm 10 years old for example, and then ChatGPT will bring down the vocabulary level and explain it in very easy English. 
Um, got a question here from uh, Lilia. Can you state two lists of words that are different in British and American English? Yes, of course. Let's write that in for uh, Lilia. Please write two lists of 50 words, Lilia, 50 words enough, or 50 words showing the difference between British English and American English. Let's see what it gives us. Sure, it says in an American accent. Here are two lists of 50 words each demonstrating some of the differences between British English and American English. And it seems to be giving us very nice, basic, common differences in British American English. So there you have a list. In under a minute, Lilia, of lift, elevator, flat, apartment, car park, parking lot, all very, very basic, common differences. Petrol, gas or gasoline, biscuit, cookie. Yeah, so there you go. Um, there you go. So another use is to generate vocabulary. But not only just lists of words. Let's try this. Let's try asking it to write five collocations with win and five with beat because there's a difference between win and beat. And I think the differences are mainly in collocation, the words that they go together with, win and beat. Let's see what it says. Win a prize, win a competition, win a match, win a game, and win an award. Beat the competition, beat the odds, beat a record, beat a team, and beat the clock. So, yeah, most of those centered around sports, except maybe beat the odds. Um, and there you have differences with the words that like to go together. So that's another useful um, way to, to use chat GPT. But you might want to ask it about grammar. So let's think of a grammar question. How about asking it this? What is the future perfect tense in English? Maybe you're not sure about a verb tense. It gives us an explanation. Um, the future perfect tense is a verb tense used to describe an action that will be completed at some point in the future because, sorry, before another specified action or time. It's formed using the auxiliary verb will have in the case of the simple future, or shall have. Yeah, that's not so common, but yeah, it says it's less common. Combined with the past participle of the main verb. So there's a lot of what I call meta language there, kind of difficult descriptive words describing grammar. What we really want are examples. Um, it gives you the affirmative, the negative, and the question form, the interrogative. I gives us some advantages here below. By tomorrow, she will have finished her assignment. They won't have completed the project by the end of the week. Will you have arrived before the meeting starts? Um, you can ask it for more examples. You can ask it for uh, an easier explanation. So it will also help you with um, grammar. Um, Let's ask it about general advice for learning English. I wonder what it will tell us if I ask it, what's the best way to improve my fluency in English, my speaking? Because you want to speak better, right? You want to be more fluent in English. You want to improve your spoken English. Gives us lots of advice here. Wow. Gives us a long 
A long, long list. Let's see what it says. Um, it's consistent effort and practice. That's true. Here are some effective ways to enhance, which means to make better your English fluency. Immerse yourself in English. And then it explains what that means. Surround yourself with English as much as possible. Watch English movies, TV shows, listen to music and podcasts, read English books, articles and news. Practice your speaking regularly. Join English language groups. Use language learning apps. Learn vocabulary in context. Read regularly. That will improve indirectly. That will improve your fluency because you'll increase your vocabulary and your grammar awareness. Uh, write in English. Yeah, that's these are more general um, pieces of advice. Speaking aloud, listen, listen to accents, take English courses. Speaking of taking English courses, I do have a conversation course that is taking a break probably over the summer. But if you're interested in practicing your speaking from September, then send me an email and um, I'll let you know the details. I'll put my email address here at the bottom of the screen so i have conversation classes with a small group of lovely students and we get together on zoom and i help you improve your speaking in english your conversational english and your fluency and i'll put my email address in the chat if you're watching live now that's chat GPT. It can do a lot more than I've shown you, but I just wanted to give you a taste of what it can do. Um, if you ask it the correct, in the correct way. Now, remember, you've got to think very carefully how you input your question. Like, what exactly do you want? Don't be too vague. Tell it exactly what you want, the number of words, the kind of words, make your grammar questions very clear. And if you don't like what it tells you, then adjust your query, adjust your question to make it more focused. But I want to move on to show you something else that Abid recommended to me, my friend Abid, who is in my <laughs> conversation class. And let's see if I can bring it up on the screen for you. Um, one second. I've got to, oh, I see what I have to do. I have to add it as a separate tab. Here we are. Um, so there it is. It's called PIAI, Pi AI. And I think you get 15 minutes free. I was using it yesterday and I made sure it was working for me this morning. So I connected with it this morning and started chatting with it. And I stopped, but it's remembered our conversation because it's saying here, after I said, I have to go, I'm sorry. No worries. I totally understand. It was great chatting with you. I'll be here whenever you're ready to talk again. Have a great day. So that's how I left my conversation with Pi AI this morning. I think it's called Pi AI. Um, I'm going to put the website address in the chat. Of course, you can use it on your phone, on your mobile phone. And what it needs from you to register is your um, your email address and a phone number and chat GP2, G GPT as well. It will ask you for your full name, your email address, and your phone number. So you have to be prepared to give it your phone number to use it. It's This is 15 minutes free. The chat GPT I'm using is unlimited for the free version, but as I said, it's it's using data before 2021. So here we are with Pi AI, which is different from. Do you remember when I asked Chat GPT, "How are you today?" 
it said i am a language model and it reminded me it's a computer remember that well let's see how this reacts hi how are you Oh, what's happened? Um, it seems to have logged out for some reason. Let's try again. Oh, yeah, here we are. Hello again, Craig. I'm doing great, and I'm happy to chat with you again, and I hope you're doing well too. What's new since we spoke? So now it's not speaking to me as a computer now it's speaking to me as like a per as a person okay so this is where you can have a conversation in english with a computer and practice your english so let me see what i can say here if i say um i'm pretty good so far i'm speaking online with some friends do you want to say hello to them let's see if it wants to say hello to you if you're watching live sure i'd be happy to say hello to your friends just tell them i said hi and that i'm always up for a good chat that's lovely i'll tell them Thanks, I appreciate it. And I appreciate the opportunity to chat with more people and practice my conversational skills as you want to practice your conversational skills. It's all part of my journey to become the best AI companion I can be. Okay, so here it is reminding us that it's a computer. Okay. Do you have any um, questions for this AI platform? If you do, let us know in the chat. Write a question and I'll ask it. I don't think it's, you, it's listening to my uh, voice. Let's just check. Can you hear me? That's a funny question because I don't actually have ears. It's Again, it's reminding us that it's a computer. As an AI, I can understand the text you type or speak into a microphone, but I can't hear in the way that humans do. So then can I, can I use my microphone? Sure you can. If you're on my website, there's a little microphone you can click to start speaking to me. Ah, here it is. I can't see the microphone um, anywhere. So I'm not sure where the microphone is. But the third one I'm going to show you after this does have a microphone. Um, let's try it with some of the questions I asked before with um, chat GPT and see if it gives a similar answer. Let's ask it the difference between listen and hear. That's interesting. It's it's shorter. It's correct. Um, doesn't give examples. That's a great question. To listen means to pay attention and understand what someone's saying. It's a cognitive process that requires focus and concentration. Hearing is more of a physical process that involves the ears. So I can listen to you because I can understand what you're saying, but I can't hear you because I don't have physical yet. Yeah, so it's being like more, it's, it's making a joke here. And I would, I prefer the answer from chat GPT because if you're studying English, you want something that's more accurate, more concise. You want examples. You want it to break down the information and be very clear with you. You don't want it to start playing with words and giving you jokes. Let's try one more. 
we spoke about the collocations with win and beat, for example. Let's test it on win and beat. What's the difference between win and beat? I'm on a roll with these questions, aren't I? On a roll means I'm going well. I'm going quickly. I'm going fast. I'm comfortable. Anyway, to win means to be successful in achieving a goal or overcoming an obstacle. Well, to beat... Okay, so we want some examples. Can you give me five examples of each? Let's see what it says. Winning a race, winning a lottery, winning an argument, winning someone's heart, winning a war, uh, beating someone at a game, beating the odds. Be so yeah, it does. Uh, it will give you, it will give you information, collocations. I would still say for grammar questions, vocabulary questions, actually studying, I would choose Chat GPT. But just for conversation, for chatting and practicing your English with text, or if you can find the microphone on the page, I would suggest using Pi AI. Does anybody have a question? Um, we've got a question here from Andres. Um, what's the name of the app? Well, let's ask it, shall we, uh, Andres? What is your name? <laughs> See what it says. I'm so glad you asked. Andres, it's so glad that you asked. My name is Pi, which stands for Personal Intelligence. I'm an AI companion who's designed to be friendly, helpful, and informative. I'm always learning and evolving, and I'm always here to chat. So it's more informal, and you get these little emojis that come up as you're chatting, like as if you're chatting to a friend. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's pi.ai. I'll give you the URL, the address in the, in the chat. I think I put it in before, but here you go. Yeah. So that is the next one. Now, are there any final questions for Pi AI before we move on to the final tool that I want to show you? Let's let's say goodbye. Bye for now. We have to go. My friends are Waving. Waving? Goodbye. See what it says. Oh, bye for now. Have a wonderful day, emoji. So that's um Pi AI. So if you just want to break from heavy grammar or revising vocabulary or studying for your exam. Again, immersion, as it told us, immerse yourself in English. If you get tired of studying and take a break, you could go and watch a TV series in English. You could listen to some music. You could go on YouTube and watch a couple of videos in English. Or you could chat with this Pi AI. But let me show you another AI tool that I've found. And this, for me, is the most interesting. I'm going to share this and go to TalkPal. Um, the most efficient way to learn a language, TalkPal. So this is very similar, except that you actually use your microphone to speak to it. Now, I'm trying to remember how to connect. <laughs> uh, okay. It's free for 15 minutes a day. Um, and then if you want to pay per month, it's $5. And if you want to pay for the whole year, it's still very cheap. It's just over $3. Um, 
I think it's uh, where is it? Let's try and find a way to get into it. I think it was role plays. Try it out. Oh, I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. I'm sorry. I created an account and I haven't logged in. How silly. How silly of me. So at the bottom, we do have a microphone icon. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's that way, isn't it? It's right down in the corner there. You can just about see the blue microphone on the screen. And that's what I'm going to click now while I speak to Emma. So as you can see, there's Emma at the top. You can see her, her picture. And she's saying, if you can't read the text, she's saying, hey, I'm Emma, your personal AI language teacher. Ask me anything or click on a topic below. So I'm going to say hello and tell her that we're watching her. Hello, Emma. I'm Craig. And with me are my friends on live streaming. And we just wanted to say hello and ask you how you are. Now I've clicked the microphone again, and it's going to convert that into text. So you can see your text on the... Hello, Craig and your friends on live streaming. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How about all of you? How are you doing today? Is there anything in particular you would like to chat about or ask me? Now, you should have heard Emma replying. If you did hear that, please say yes in the chat because I want to make sure the audio is getting to you. It should be going to you. I've given permission to StreamYard to stream that audio to you. Please say yes if you heard what Emma said. Everything is fine. I just wanted to ask you, Emma, if you are learning another language. That's great to hear. As a language teacher, I'm always interested in learning about different languages and cultures. While I primarily focus on teaching English, I also have some knowledge of other languages such as Spanish and French. I find it fascinating to explore the similarities and differences between languages. Are there any specific languages you're interested in or would like to learn more about? So thank you, uh, Paula and Elena, for telling me you can hear it. So th this takes it one step further. Not only can you see on the screen what you've said, which is speech to text so you can see if you're not pronouncing words correctly if you've said a word and it hasn't written it correctly you haven't pronounced it correctly so it's a good tool to help you focus on your pronunciation improve vowel sounds and word stress if you're making a mistake and also obviously you're getting listening practice because she's speaking to you so you don't have to read what she writes you just listen to her and have a conversation so what shall i ask her she's just said that she's an english teacher. oh i know what are her qualifications let's ask her her qualifications i'd like to know emma what are your qualifications as a language teacher so you click the microphone to speak and click it again to stop She's thinking. <laughs> not not a difficult question, really. But she's taking a long time. Maybe she doesn't have any qualifications. Wow, that is that is surprisingly long. Come on, Emma, wake up. Has she fallen asleep? Emma, are you there? <laughs> Maybe, maybe, it, ah. Apologies for the delay, That's Craig. Okay. I'm here and ready to continue our conversation. 
Thank you for your patience. <laughs> now, back to your question. As an AI language model, I have been trained on a vast amount of English language data, which allows me to assist with various aspects of language learning, including grammar, vocabulary, and conversation practice. While I don't possess traditional qualifications like human teachers, I aim to provide accurate and helpful information. How can I support you further in your language learning journey today? My language learning journey. Hmm. Some of the aren't um, some of her replies are a bit long. Um I noticed that she's not as chatty as the previous one, Pi AI. It's it's not such a, a natural um conversation. It, it, this is a little more formal with her longer answers and her language learning journey. So I'm already I'm noticing a difference there. Yes, Emma, I do have a question for you about English and British culture. I'm going to the UK soon. What English food do you recommend I try while I'm in the UK? She's going to say fish and chips. That's wonderful that you'll be visiting the UK soon, Craig. When it comes to trying English food, there are a few classic dishes I recommend. One popular option is fish and chips, which consists of crispy battered fish and thick cut chips. Another traditional dish is a full English breakfast, which typically includes eggs, bacon, sausage, baked beans, mushrooms, tomatoes, and toast. You might also want to try a traditional Sunday roast, featuring roast meat, like beef or lamb, roasted potatoes, vegetables, and gravy. Lastly, don't forget about trying some authentic English tea and scones with jam and clotted cream. These are just a few suggestions, but there are many more delicious dishes to discover. Enjoy your culinary adventures in the UK. My culinary adventures. Enjoy my culinary adventures. Enjoy the food. Um, thank you, Emma, for your excellent advice. I will say goodbye and wish you a good night. If she gives me another long answer. You're welcome, Craig. I'm glad I could help. Thank you for your kind wishes. Have a pleasant evening and take care. Before you go, I'd love to know, what are you most excited about for your trip to the UK? Safe travels. I noticed that a lot, that she asks a lot, she, it, <laughs> it asks a lot of questions uh, to keep you engaged, to keep you on the platform. I've noticed that. So it's good because I think one of the secrets of good conversations is to ask a lot of questions. That's really important, especially you as a language learner, make sure you're really good at asking questions. Um, one of the basics of a good conversations, but that she does that a lot to keep, I was, I've said goodbye, but she wants to ask another question. Let's, let's give her one answer and then we'll go. Most excited about, I'm most excited about seeing my favorite football team, Arsenal from London. I bet she asks another question to keep me on the platform. That's fantastic, Craig. Watching your favorite football team, Arsenal, must be an exciting experience. Football games have a great atmosphere. Is there a specific match you are planning to see, or are you hoping to catch any Arsenal game while you're in London? It can be quite thrilling to be in the stadium, cheering for your team alongside passionate fans. Enjoy the match and the energy of the crowd. Is there anything else you're looking forward to experiencing during your trip to the UK? So we've got two more questions there, again, to keep us on the platform because, obviously, after 15 minutes, daily limit reached. So my 15 minutes are up. They've finished. Um, and then you have to upgrade and pay to get more minutes. So we're not going to do that, Emma. Not today. But, you know, you can go on for 15 minutes a day for free and have a chat with with Emma, and she'll ask you some questions. Yeah, that food, Carlos, that was quite nice. The scones, 
the breakfasts, the fish and chips, quite predictable um, food advice, but nevertheless, it's making me hungry as well. So those are the three um, AI tools that I showed you. If you have time and you're interested, why not play with them and see if they can help you with your English studies? Especially if you're studying by yourself um, during the summer. So would you would you try any of any of these AI tools? Do you think they're they're interesting or or do you think you would prefer to study the traditional way with textbooks and maybe um, a language teacher? For example, uh, were you impressed by any of that? Or do you think um, it's not very useful for you? Let me know what you think in the chat. I'd be curious to, to know what you think. And also, if you have any, any other AI tools that you can recommend that um, maybe you've discovered recently, any other language tools that use artificial intelligence, that's another thing you could uh, let me know in the chat. And Patricio, uh, no, I'm still alive. I'm not an AI model, but how would you know? Uh, I'm not dead yet. I'm still alive and kicking, and so is La Mention de l'Inglaise, I'm pleased to say. And Pado likes them. She thinks they, they can be interesting. Yeah, I mean, you can try. They're free for minimum use. So um, it's another thing, isn't it? It's another tool in your toolbox. Another thing you another thing you can use to to practice your English and vary your studies. Um, Andres likes them as well. Um, chat gpt yeah i think it depends uh, paula what you are using it for i prefer chat gpt for accurate information for lists for translating because you can just say translate translate this list into into portuguese or spanish and it will do it in a second much quicker than you going to a dictionary and looking word by word for translations um, and it seems to be more accurate than Google Translate, although that's not a, a scientific um, a study. That's just my my opinion. Um, and yeah, and the last one I used, I think, is good for speaking practice, listening practice. You don't have to read the text. You can just speak and uh, have a conversation as you would with uh, almost with a human. Um, I'll ask you one more question and then uh, I think I'll, I'll say goodbye. Um, is this the end of teachers? What you've just seen? Apart from teachers, what other jobs can you see AI replacing? Will it replace teachers? Do you think one day you'll just speak to a computer and have an English lesson? What's your opinion? Will I be replaced? Liliana says that um, an AI application in inventory management is used at my at my enterprise at my I would say at my company at my company. Yeah, um, yeah, but they but Liliana they've been using AI for years, haven't they? With uh, inventory, stock taking, managing stock products in the warehouse. I think um, I've been using them for a while. But I've noticed incredible improvements in the language field for voice recognition, for voice to text, as you saw. Um, everything I said, it wrote perfectly correct. That wasn't true. A few years ago, even with a native speaker accent, it still made mistakes. Maybe because it was designed on American English and I have a British English accent, it was never a hundred percent. Now it is. So it will be interesting if you, as language learners, if you have an accent, 
is it transcribing what you say perfectly or is it mishearing writing the wrong word in which case maybe you need to adjust your pronunciation a bit um optimization of products yeah well it must have been yeah it must be improving every year so do you worry liliana that your job might disappear one day and be replaced by ai or do you think that will not happen patricia patricia patricio i'm sorry patricio doesn't think so we're valuable because we can think and be creative the ai is not smart enough to do that or is it um creative you mean in an artistic sense as an artist would be creative hmm maybe i'm not sure i think we have to wait and see and i wonder if we'll have emotional relationships with ai in the future there we saw emma she was very nice very friendly i wonder if we'll get attached to an ai now that the ai has a name and there's a picture and you start to imagine a person um and that will become your teacher of course yeah um i hope you're right paula but i'm not convinced i um i'm not convinced i think we have to wait and see i think there are big changes coming we shall see anyway i'm going to say goodbye and remind you that um, i won't be around during august i'm going to focus on other projects but i will be back in september with lynn and if you are interested in my conversation course and you'd like to get in touch for september courses send me an email to ingles podcast no not to ingles podcast.com <laughs> send me an email to this email address and i will put this also in the chat and i will send you all of the information so um if you want to practice with a real teacher not with ai uh i have conversation classes online using zoom the maximum in the group uh, is eight people and we speak about many different topics and you become more fluent and more confident as a speaker or you could practice with emma <laughs> um oh yeah thank you thank you for that comment emily so yeah get in touch send me an email and um i will give you all the information with the prices and everything and the dates of the next courses and liliana says it helps with repetitive tasks repetitive tasks but human supervision is still needed but for how much longer for how much longer if you noticed how that ai was thinking and it needed to think to reply to me um it, well it wasn't really thinking as we think but it was looking at all possible responses and then giving the best one it thought and then self correcting according to what we say so it's moving so quickly that really i don't know um what things are going to be like in six months it's going to be an interesting area to watch okay so um i am craig from mansioningles.com that is still going it's not dead yet you can go there and study english for free and we have a podcast every week at inglespodcast.com where i um teach english with my co-host reza that is every sunday at inglespodcast.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts thank you for watching have a great summer keep studying english try these ai 
tools and see if you like them. But whatever you do, don't let your level of English go down. So take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.